Hello everyone, my name is Derek Snedden, my colleagues Rebecca Wynn and Dylan Sharp and I would all like to present to you Peanuts, a Yahoo hosted data serving platform. Before we begin, we should be discussing the credentials that this paper has pertaining to itself as we will be referencing the paper throughout the entirety of this presentation. The title is Yahoo's hosted data serving platform. It is written by several different people from the Yahoo's Research Institute, and it was published in 2008. All right, so for this slide, it's what is Peanuts? It is a distributed database system for Yahoo's web applications. Um, so it either provides hashed or ordered tables for data sets. Um, it is able to handle large numbers of concurrent requests and made to provide scalability, low latency, availability, and with consistency for web applications. Um, it also has no SQL. And here are some of the features found in the design for Peanuts. We have a simple relational data model that is designed to handle queries for primarily single keys or small ranges. We have fault tolerance using data replication and logging, and we also have load balancing. And since Yahoo is accessed globally, Peanuts also provides a synchronous replication and a consistency model and low latency. An extremely important facet of Peanuts is its architecture. If we take a look at it, it is divided up into several different regions. The regions containing a set of routers, a tablet controller, um, a set of storage units, and message brokers. Um, which we will talk about the message brokers in further complexity, but they don't necessarily 100% sit inside of a region as they are used to very much communicate between different regions as well. And we will also speak about the tablets in further complexity as well, um, which are the little storage units. But it is very important as we discuss this paper to understand and realize the overall structure as to which the architecture takes form as. So this slide is about data query model, part one. So the first thing is data organization. Um, this data is pushed into tables of records with attributes. Um, this allows for abstract data types, um, which are known as blob fields. Um, blob fields can be any data type. It could be an integer, Boolean, etc., cetera. Um, and they will be manipulated in application logic. Um, Peanuts database language relies of primary keys. This is very similar to SQL. Um, and they also focus on handling small queries. Um, and the reason for this is because the users are just everyday people that are the ones changing and manipulating the data. All right, for part two, for data query, data and query model, has a parallel multi-get system, which is done by specifying a set of primary keys. Um, this can be done up to around a few thousand keys at a time. The next thing is the point slash range access. The point is what has a scan individual, which is such as a someone's own record, range scans a group, which would be like a group of friends. Tablets are the main storage unit of peanuts. They are horizontally partitioned groups of records and servers might have hundreds or thousands of them. Um, each tablet is stored in a server region and they contain up to a few gigabytes of storage each. Uh, three components that deal with tablets are storage units, which store the tablets and respond to requests for those tablets. The router caches um, maps from tablets to storage units for lookups, and the tablet controller um, is the main storage of all those maps, and it also deals with recovery and timing. When we talk about peanuts, we have to talk about single queries and multiple query operations. Now, for single queries, a single query is going to be performed on a single record that's going to be sitting inside of a storage unit. So first, they're going to send the request, the get request to the router to go get the key. 
then what they're going to do is they're going to actually perform the operation on the individual storage unit you can see in the diagram that it's being performed on storage unit three then once it gets it it's going to be sending it back to the router and recording it uh well sending a record operation back and then it's going to be actually recording it for the user and that is how single query operations work next we have to talk about multiple query operations now this is going to operate a little bit differently than single query operations because it requires a separate component. Simply put, that component needs to be able to generate multiple requests and monitor each of their respective successes and failures. This component is known as the, re as the scatter gather engine. The scatter gather engine in turn is going to be issuing multiple requests um, that well, it's good by splitting each of them up into separate smaller requests for individual records and for individual tablet scans. And in turn, it will initiate each of these requests in parallel. And by executing parallelism, we can achieve greater speeds here and accomplish our goals faster. So this slide is Peanuts Application Part 1. So the first thing is the user database. It has an asynchrony model with low latency. Um, the user database has high traffic and millions of users, so the model needs to fit those needs. Um, the user data cannot be lost, but there can be relaxed consistency with it. So basically, the user must see their own changes, but it is fine if other users do not see the user's changes for some time. Um, the next point is social applications. It uses a flexible data store that has the ability to support operations that focus on information being shared and connection between users. So this flexible sch schema of peanuts helps support the fast evolving social, social applications. The next point is content metadata. It plays a role as the metadata store of a distributed bulk storage system. It stores the actual file blocks um, and manages the structured metada metadata that is usually stored inside directories and inodes. Um, this model is very important to properly manage metadata without sacrificing the scalability of it. Okay, so for the applications part two. This, so the first point is listing management. Um, has an order table to store listings. Um, and it's ordered by timestamps. This allows sites to show the most recent and items. Um, so this is easy to model. Um, the varied attributes of different kinds of products. The next point is session data. Strong consistency is not required for per session state, but so this is what enables the application to have better performance because the applications can turn off all peanuts consistency for ses session tables. Now, if we want to discuss the impacts of peanuts, we need to in turn discuss its experimental results and the experiments that were run on it. One thing that's important to consider is that they were using an enhanced programming version of Peanuts when conducting these experiments as opposed to the actual deployment. But here we can see that the system is written mostly in C++. Another thing to um, consider with that, that, that just tells us like where it's at. Now, especially in the time it was in 2008 so it wasn't using python um another thing to consider is they tried to do a lot of low level optimization in order to get the results that they got um first off when we're discussing inserting data the the thing about inserting data that's interesting is that when you use mysql apparently it works a lot faster on larger queries and larger inserts but when you use peanuts own database system that they wrote uh, that they custom wrote through a NoSQL system, it actually works a lot faster on smaller queries. And because the users here are everyday ones, it's working a lot, it's going to work a lot faster. Another thing to reconsider about this is the latency and the test behind that. Oddly enough, best performance occurs under moderate and heavy traffic. There's like an anomaly going on, specifically in the HTTP client library. So what, what they tried to do and what they what they talked about what they wanted to do as their next goal was to actually optimize the performance under low traffic so that way users 
while they're under low traffic, can still get the same great experience of using peanuts. And then the last thing it needed to test was scaling. Now with scaling, it needed to be able to vary highly on the number of storage units. So in turn, it prioritized that. It prioritized the ability to actually be able to stack uh, more servers on and then be able to have it work functionally. And that's what happened with the experimental results. To help get consistency in asynchronous replication, Peanuts uses a published subscribe system called the Yahoo Message Broker. This system can guarantee the delivery of a message by logging it onto multiple servers and disks. Also, the message is copied twice initially, but as it propagates, it is replicated more. To keep data consistent, Peanuts also presents a recovery system for when machines fail. First, the tablet controller asks for a copy of a lost tablet from the source tablet. Second, a checkpoint message is published to the message broker to ensure that when the copy is initiated, that all updates that are currently active are applied to the source tablet before it's copied in the third phase. This slide is about Peanut's future work. Um, so th some of the things that they're going to focus on are the indexes and materialized views, bundle updates, data storage and retrieval, such as fair sharing of storage units and message brokers. And the last one is query processing, which is query optimization, expansion of query language such as join, and batch query processing. So when we talk about peanuts, we also need to bring up the related work that goes along with it. For example, we need to bring up distributed and parallel databases and how they compare to others. Um, unlike Google's file system, which was mentioned in the paper and other file systems that are like it, peanuts can't exactly use the same type of consistently mo consistency model and other traditional techniques just because of the fact that it, it has to do its own thing with Peanut's simplified query language and it the fact that it doesn't have quite the same consistency model differences, differences things out. It also doesn't shard at all, which is a unique difference of what Peanuts is. Getting into the, the file systems themselves, Peanuts particularly provide tries to provide something that is better than other file systems. They didn't exactly describe exactly what that meant, but it still aims to be a better file system than the other file systems that exist at that current time. Now, when we talk about distributed hash tables, what Peanuts does is it doesn't quite use wild peer-to-peer, peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer that just goes on from computer to computer to computer. Um, instead, it uses managed data centers so it can keep a close eye on everything. And then for the last thing we have to consider, we have to talk about data routing, which is essentially here we, Peanuts uses table hotspots for flexibility. Um, and they also tend to use a router layer to actually abstract the actual data to the location of that data to prevent interference with the client so the client doesn't just figure out exactly where the data is coming from and then potentially uh, there could be some conflicts there. So that's why it keeps that hidden. In conclusion, Peanuts provides rich functionality, low latency, and scalability. This is done using asynchrony, a consistency model that can guarantee per record timeline consistency without sacrificing scalability, the message broker, which controls replication and redo logging, and a flexible tablet storage model that supports automated failover and load balancing.